Ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Are you covering the lens? No. That's, that's oh, there. Not there. Not. Sorry. All right. So I put this video together um, to answer a question that somebody had given me um, regarding the Samsung uh, TV repair video. He had a, an inverter board that um, he was repairing, was running into some trouble. And I asked him to consider checking the ESR of, of the capacitor. He didn't really know what that meant. And so I think it would be a good idea to throw together a, an ESR video since I, I really didn't find any, too many. There's probably some I didn't look all that hard, but here's a chance to show you a recent repair that I did there, uh, involving ESR. I think it would be helpful for others to, to see it. So uh, the repair that I did was uh, of a Mac. You can see a, a large 24-inch Mac computer. The power supply had, uh, had died. And... Um, uh, it had bulging capacitors, and bulging capacitors are, were a problem. They still might even be a problem today, and that uh, that can be detected with uh, with um, an ESR meter. But we should probably get some history to this whole bulging capacitor thing if you don't know already. I'm not going to say I'm an expert at this stuff, but if you go to Wikipedia, you can see. Uh, let me just minimize this. You can see there's a, a decent article on what's called capacitor plague. And historically, it sounds like uh, around 99, there was a, a capacitor has some secret sauce you can pull out uh, inside of, inside of uh, electrolytic capacitor. This has to do with electrolytic capacitors, a very common capacitor that you might see in, in boards and motherboards and all kinds of common consumer electronics. Fairly, fairly standard. Um, inside of these things, there's some secret sauce called an electrolyte. And um, unfortunately, it sounds like the electrolyte formula was stolen and uh, replicated in multiple manufacturers or two manufacturers. And the formula itself uh, was defective, intentional. That, that's that's the, the theory. Um, as a result of that, uh, for many years, and still maybe even today, uh, a lot of these capacitors would, would uh, under load over time, would bulge. And... Um, uh, here's a good, good picture of them. There's plenty of shots out there. And um, that bulging would cause the capacitor to uh, change its its uh, its ability to do what it's supposed to do. And sometimes they would blow up and they would fail in their function. It could be a, a capacitor that's uh, just acting as a filter capacitor or it could be in a switch mode power supply. And um, when it fails, you got all kinds of interesting situations. Now I say... Uh, it, I don't know if the, the capacitor plague is still prevalent with modern capacitors that are made in the last few years, uh, but there's, I don't know, either way, I fixed a power supply last year that uh, had a bulging capacitor. Um, this 2009 iMac, I don't know when the power supply died, but it had bulging capacitors. Um, and I don't even know if it's necessarily um, conclusive if the capacitors will bulge. Perhaps uh, another issue is uh, if you push a capacitor too hard, run it too hot, the electrolyte itself will dry out and, and start to fail in other interesting ways. So it would be kind of cool to, uh, to discuss how to detect a, a capacitor that's fallen into that, into that situation. Uh, I got a link here to a, a forum called badcaps.net. It looks like I have got the wrong page open. He, this gentleman is a pretty nice guy. He, he talks about, um, you can pull it, that's cool. Um, he talks a, a little bit more of the history of this thing, and he, he suspects that it's still going on, and I do too. Um, and he also is nice enough to sell kits. He, he's put together kits. I don't think he's making much money doing it. Uh, if you have a motherboard, or a, let's say an Asus motherboard, I saw it's kind of hard to find the capacitors going out and shopping yourself and he puts them together probably makes a few bucks but whatever that's a that's a good service they're kind of hard to find all the values and in, in the quantities that you're looking for they're not incredibly expensive if you had to go to replace the capacitors it's it's a little bit of work to, to change them but the capacitors themselves are pretty pretty inexpensive so let's get on to ESR what is ESR uh, there's a Wikipedia page here that kind of introduces what ESR is all about and it I'll just summarize what this says here it makes a little sense I'm going to skip the word inductors because they use the word inductors 
It says, practical capacitors are used in electric circuits, but they are not ideal components with only capacitors. Now, it sounds kind of confusing, but if you read on, it says, they can be treated to a very good degree of approximation as being ideal capacitors in series with a resistance. So this resistance is defined as the equivalent series resistance, if not otherwise specified. The ESR is always an AC resistance measured with standardized frequencies. It sounds really confusing, but essentially you can't assume <clears throat> that a, a, a capacitor is just a pure capacitor. And this, this is just a capacitor that has capacitive properties. Um, you have to assume that there is a little bit of internal resistance to alternating current. And all capacitors have a little bit of internal resistance to AC current. And the, the, there's data sheets specifically for the capacitor you're choosing. Now, a lot of the, the modern day capacitors that kind of we're dealing with today and, and for the last many years, the equivalent series resistance of uh, these common off the shelf um, aluminum electrolytic capacitors, they have a fairly low ESR, meaning a fairly small number like an ohm or much smaller than an ohm and it's kind of hard to measure uh, on uh, that small of a value you cannot measure the equivalent series resistance with your traditional multimeter this is we're not measuring resistance like we would with an ohm meter we actually have to get a meter you can build or buy one so let's have a look um, if you Google around, you'll see all kinds of references to ESR meters. And here's a, a fairly decent looking schematic if you wanted to build one yourself. The capacitor would go here and your meter would go up here. And if you read up on how to, how to build that, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty fun. Looks like it'll be an all day affair. This particular um, device actually puts out a hundred kilohertz AC signal. So you're actually applying a, a hundred kilohertz AC signal with a peak-to-peak -peak voltage of 100 millivolts. It's a pretty small voltage and a very reasonably low frequency. And you just simply apply it to the capacitor. The cool thing about an ESR meter is this circuit can be applied to the capacitor you're testing while the capacitor is on the board. It's not necessary to remove the capacitor, according to what I've read. I, I haven't done a lot of ESR testing myself. Uh, it makes sense because it's a fairly small signal and it's probably not going to bias any uh, any of the semiconductor components that are on the board, so you probably won't damage anything. And if you've got 15 suspicious capacitors on your board you're trying to repair, that would be really helpful to not have to remove them all. Now, I'm a bit lazy. I'm not going to build a, uh, an ESR meter. I'd, I'd probably go out and buy one. I've read quite a bit. And this uh, Anatech Blue ESR meter sounds like a pretty good choice. It's inexpensive. It's not super fancy. Um, there are some very expensive ones you can get if you're really interested in specific measurements. But in the case of these capacitors that we're measuring, we're, we're only looking for something that is uh, a larger value than what is supposed to be a nice small value. So at the bottom of this comparison, oh, first I'm gonna go to the top of the comparison. They, these guys who put that uh, Anatech together, they have a really good comparison here of all the different meters that they've tested, um, including almost testing the meter that I have here. I'll show you that in a sec. Um, the pros and cons of each meter, blah, blah, blah. And down here, they do kind of talk about um, the, the intensity of uh, how, how anal you'd have to be if you had some specific types of capacitors. Um, down here, a tech can do two things. You can limit your ESR me measurements to mid-range electrolytics only. Most capacitors fall into this category and you have not given up much. That's what we're doing today. These are mid-range capacitors uh, and they should have a nice small ESR value and it's easy to distinguish between a small ESR and a, what should be still small and isn't. Um, and that's what we're going to do today. So here it is. This is a meter that I, my father happened to have. Um, it's the Matt Electronics. The, um, the Anatech people didn't review this thing uh, because something was wrong with it. The battery 
clipping or something like that was busted. And so they don't recommend it. It is a pretty inexpensive meter um, from what I read, but it, it does the job. Now, um, the normal, let, let's actually connect it up so we can see that it is in fact just not uh, not magic secret sauce here. I'm turning on my old school, I haven't seen this thing for a while, my old school um, oscilloscope. For those who have never seen oscilloscope, it's kind of like a, a TV for electrical signals. I'm going to connect up my meter to the probes, and these probes always have a fun time bouncing off, like you see. Hopefully I can do it without going back and forth. <laughs> Of course, only for YouTube. Okay, it's there. I'm going to turn the, the meter on. And I've got it. We can come back up here. I just have to synchronize our frequency here. All right. So that is the AC waveform that's being pumped out by the, uh, the Matt Electronics, uh, what's it called? Matt Electronics meter. What does this mean? I'm on a 20 millivolt peak to peak thingy here. And that's four gradations. So that's 80 millivolts peak to peak, which is close enough to the 100 millivolt peak to peak that uh, I've seen as a, as a circuit design. The frequency is a, is a fun thing to measure. I'm going to sweep left and right. I have, I have a vertical starting point of this uh, particular frequency. And it is repeating again one, two, three full gradations over. Each gradation is five microseconds. Therefore, this is three gradations. This is 15 microseconds wide. So the period of this, uh, this waveform is 15 microseconds. Now, if you come up here uh, to a frequency calculator and enter 15, I get, whoops, I have to change this to kilohertz. Uh, kilohertz. So this <laughs> and microseconds. 15 microseconds is 66 kilohertz. Period and frequency are just inverted of each other. It's not, nothing fancy there. So this thing is putting out 80 volts, 80 millivolts peak to peak uh, at 66 kilohertz. Is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's a cheap meter and I have evidence that it works because I fixed something with it. Let's go through what I did. I'll turn off my meter. We'll come over here. And let's first talk about calibration of this thing. So here's our meter. It takes six double A's. It would prefer to have six double A's of a battery chemistry that is one and a half volts. I'm using double A's of nickel metal hydride, which are 1.3 volts. Therefore, when I calibrate it, I can't get a full deflection. That's okay. I don't really care. I'm going to short my meters out. Uh, I would love to be able to swing this all the way up to uh, to zero, but I can't. It's not broken, and I don't care. I'm not going to be measuring the ESR. I'm only interested in seeing um, a change in ESR, because most of these capacitors you'll see in a second have an ESR um, that's very close to a dead short, very close to small numbers of, uh, of ohms, tenths of an ohm. So that's dead short. See, I'm, I'm intentionally just pointing it to 15. The 15 means nothing. It's just a reference point. Let's take this bad boy here. And um, I'm going to, when I say shorting, I'm going to be doing the same thing we did a second ago. That's shorting. And now I'm going across the capacitor. Shorting, whoops, and across the capacitor. So as you can see, it's the same thing. There's really not much of a deflection. This is this has a very low ESR, something I would expect. Let's grab another capacitor of a known good quantity, just to show you I'm not going crazy. That's a, a dead short, and then across the capacitor. There might be a slight decrease in the sweep there, meaning there is a larger amount of ESR and if you if assuming here that that's zero and this is one ohm, maybe it's a tenth of an ohm. I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Now, here's the capacitors of the power supply that I repaired. There's four of them here. They're, they were all, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see that on camera. The reason for concern is right there. Maybe you can see a side profile. They are, are all of them are bulged. They are the only 
four of this style capacitor that came from that power supply. And um, let's see what happens. I'm gonna put them, this is dead short, and this is across the capacitor. That's not that bad. I'm not too offended by that particular capacitor. I would say that's normal. I'm gonna grab another one, dead short, and now across the capacitor. That's a significant change, isn't it? That's a dead short again. And then, so there is a greater amount of ESR. Basically, that meter kind of fell down to what I would say one and a half ohms if, if I was able to get full deflection. I'm gonna grab another one. This one has very short leads, so it might take me a sec to get. That's a dead short. And even a greater amount of ESR. And last capacitor. Dead short. And even a greater amount of ESR. Now I'm telling you, I, I wish I had these in the power supply and I could show you how this whole process worked. The replacement capacitors exhibited the same low ESR that you've seen in these other guys. When I replaced them, the power supply came back to life. So the conclusion here is ESR meter works. It's not important to know exactly what the ESR value is for these style of capacitors. You want a nice low ESR. This thing's a great way of measuring the existing ESR in circuit or not. And in this situation, uh, for four bucks, I was able to repair an iMac power supply with a fairly inexpensive meter. So I hope this helps.